Hello guys, I'm Mohamed Sadri, postdoctoral researcher at TU Kaiser's Lautern, and this is ses session or lesson number seven. Actually, this is part number four of session number seven, and the entire session I have called XI Stream in Detail RTL Flow. Previously, I have talked about HLS Flow briefly and now in this session I'm talking about RTL flow and in this specific video I'm going to in fact write the RTL code for our XI S3 module and since I am going to write in HDL I'm going to code in Verilog I think this is, will be the most boring video that I have ever made and I'm not, in fact, I'm doing this for the first time. I have not written this code before. So even in the middle of the work, I may make mistakes. Again, I will try to divide this video by parts and to do it part by part so that hopefully I can make it finished. So what was the story? The story, if you have watched the previous videos, was we created, in fact, a kind of wrapper representing this module this this block which we call sample generator and it has one XI slave stream interface and one XI master stream interface and then a set of control signals so we just created the ports for this guy for this guy and now I'm going today to in fact write the RTL code inside and then in previous videos in fact we created this system somehow and I showed you how these blocks are going to be connected together I should emphasize on the point that my videos are hobby videos they are not official and they may be a good start for people who are interested in the Zinc device or any Series 7 device and the Vivado environment but they are not the reference of course and you should always look at Xilinx documentation for whatever task that you want to do or you should take Xilinx official educational training so it's my own personal hobby to create these videos so where were we uh, we created actually this folder and it was containing my course SDK TCL Vivado and actually about these two I have talked extensively in previous videos and I showed you how you create the in fact the basic files the initial files of your um, Axia stream module again I have shown this in previous videos but today I go to in fact my course and then inside my course I will have mm, the RTL it is inside IP repo sample and then the HDL folder here we have the generated the RTL files they are automatic automatically generated by Vivado environment and this is kind of top module and this is in fact equal to this guy so I begin from this one what we want to do we have uh, in fact this actually stream slave interface and I I want to be able to sometimes generate some samples myself and some other times to just pass the signals that I have here to here so the first component that you need inside your design is a kind of multiplexer which either puts this signal on the output or puts the samples that you are generating internally 
on the output and then for our sample generator which we, we will write in HCL inside our module we have a configuration which we call frame size is one input port and then we have enable with which we enable or disable generation of new samples so let's get started from the simplest part which is actually the multiplexer that we will have here and I come back here and Vim sample generator so if you are not really interested in coding in RTL you can just right now close the window of the video because from this point on it will be boring definitely it will be boring um, coding in RTL is something that most of the times it needs patience and this is why some people really like HLS because with HLS you really write five lines of code and you are done with RTL you you need sometimes to write 100 lines of code to do the same thing I discussed this previously in detail so what I want to do I want to implement in fact the multiplexer here right here in the top module and I remember from my previous time that I have made some changes in the ports here and I want to make sure first that the connecting ports here they are correct so I have this module here which is my Axi stream master block and this module here which is my Axi stream slave block and then we have of course the clock signals reset signal and then the axial stream signals and what I want to do is I want to in fact bring these signals to one of the inputs of my multiplexer and these signals to other input of the multiplexer just I'm thinking with myself if in this case uh, having this unit is necessary I'm feeling this unit is not necessary so what I do I have in fact one axi a slave a stream interface and these are the signals related to this interface and then I have one axi master interface so what I do and it may be kind of not a standard because you may not like to write directly HDL code in your top module maybe for you it's a rule to not to write any HDL code in top module and the top module should just contain instantiation of blocks then if this is the case for this multiplexer we need to create a block or we need to move the multiplexer inside for example this master block that we have here but for now I violate the rule and I add my logic here okay so what I do I say here so we add the multiplexer here and the multiplexer can be really simple 
it can be just a set of assigns and so it will be something like this for example assign for now we look at the in fact output ports that we have for our axi master so the first one mxi st data and this guy mxi st data it will be m x i s t data is equal to something okay so it is equal when for example i have the signal which was responsible for controlling if we are going to put the data coming from axi slave interface or we are going to put the data coming from sample generator on the output the signal which decides this is this one axi enable and suppose that when axi enable is equal to one so i have here axi enable and when it is active when it is equal to one what i want to do i want to send the data which is coming on my axi stream slave interface on the output and what was it called probably it is called x axi st data and in the other case i mean in other situations than this what i want to do i want to put this data on the output okay and now we have one point this is actually the same name as this one and as of what i remember i think this is the change that i have done before in in one of the first videos and i i don't want this so right now let me change the name of these signals so i will call it M X I S T data W. So these guys that we have here, they I changed their name. So it will be with W W stroke W last w and this one is t ready and actually this t ready is something which is being driven by the module which is connected to our master port so i'm thinking if this one for this one if we really need to change the name let's put it as it is and later we think about it again so these wires need to be defined so let's see if i have any definition for them no i don't have any definition for them but what i can do is i i can make a copy of the definition that we already have here okay and this is I'm running everything under Linux and this is Vim and you you don't need to use Vim I and even many times I don't use Vim I use in fact Kate to write my code but right now that I'm doing this example video since Kate since Vim is the in fact is only takes space and is very light is the best option so wire 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 and wire and these guys we have semi clones and it, sorry and semi clone and semi clone okay and now now i i need a w here another w 
W and W. So these are the wires. These wires, they are coming out of my XI master plug. They are coming out of this unit. And then they enter one of the ports of my multiplexer. And now I repeat the same thing actually for the rest of the output signals of this XI master port. So assign M XI S T probably strobe. So T strobe, which is some in most of the times is not really an important signal. T strobe. Okay. Then we have T last port. Again, the same story as before. T last. last and I think um, this is the final one T stroke T data and T valid T valid is also an output yes so M X I S T valid again the same story as the rest of the guys X I enable Yeah, that is it. It's done. And now the main question will be what will you do with T ready? Actually, uh, the T ready is a signal which is coming, which is entering our design. So if I look here, I can see this clearly. If I look here, XI master plug, there's the T ready, and T ready is obviously an input. And what I do, I just directly connect the T ready in fact to the mm, to the T ready port of my master plug here and also what I do I directly connect this T ready to the in fact T ready port of the slave XI stream slave port that I have there so it will be something like this assign my final assign s x i s t ready x i e n and uh, we don't need this anymore sorry so it will be m x i s t ready yeah okay i think this is the first part of the code and maybe i have made mistakes i don't know right now we should go go ahead in fact and finish the design and then do synthesis and then do simulation and see if it is working or not and and yeah so let's continue with the rest of the story so i write this file i think for now here in top level module i don't have any further thing to do i have created my multiplexer Hopefully it should be kind of working and if it is not working we will fix it later and uh, yeah so here for my in fact master plug I no more need this master here this XI EN port I don't need it I delete it I don't need this signal and then I have frame size and then I have kind of enable and the enable was enabling the sample generator and so I need it here so I put it here the enable I put it here I, I don't remember in the previous video what I have said about this enable signal but right now what I see I don't need that um,
I don't need this block here because I directly in fact used its port here and it was useful in the in the initial part of the project when I was using Vivado to create the block for me it was useful because when I told Vivado that I have an Axio slave port then Vivado inserted this block here and also what it did it added these ports and in terms of adding ports is kind of useful but right now I don't need it anymore so let's comment it out for now we, and we don't need it for now okay it's commented out and here we have just one master plug and this master plug we should program and make it capable of generating sets of samples frames in fact and generating suitable t last in fact signal and the rest of the signals so let's go ahead i close this file for now and later maybe we need it or maybe not i don't know we will see vim sample generator v1 0 m xi s dot v and this is now our master plug and here uh, let's first check the port names i feel uh, the port names that i have there in the top level module i don't have here yes so let's see yeah this this was the file yes so here for our master we have the set of xi port in addition we have a frame size and we have en do i have them here do i have them here e users to add ports here i have not added anything so let's add first the ports that we need so uh, one of them was called frame size and so input and what was the width of frame size is 8 bits okay so input and here I have an, an 8 bit input and so it is input wire let's just completely follow the syntax that the Lilinx is using so input wire and it was called frame size I think yes and then we have another input which is just a normal input and it's called enable and why do we have one space here is extremely important I don't want to have this space so let's double check again it was frame size and enable and these two guys are in fact the input ports for my sample generator and okay now the role of the frame size it will indicate when I produce the T last signal and the T last we talked about it the T last is the signal that is indicating the end of each of your frames for example if you are transferring a video frame uh, over your XI blocks then indeed the T last can be used for indicating the end of each line of the video so T last is the indicator of each packet of data okay and then you may ask okay but what we we do for indicating the end of the frame of the video and for that they use the t user signals that we don't have them right now and we should talk about specifically about developing 
Axio stream pipelines for video processing. We should talk about it later, not now. So I have frame size, I have scene enable, and I have the list of, in fact, Axio ports, and there are a set of descriptions. Xilinx so has put, and and then if you look at this code, Xilinx has already developed a sample code for you. Uh, sample code which is working and uh, you can in fact you look at the design of Xilinx and really learn a lot of things about about how you develop your own block so um, there are a lot of nice codes here and I delete them all so I come up here is the end of the in fact port definitions and for now the rest of the guys I don't need uh, usually it's not the case usually what I do I try to use uh, what is already there in the best possible way but for now uh, let's clear them all and develop our own code uh, but I say it is most of the times not the case I usually find I have usually found the code that is already there a ver very useful okay so now we want to in fact implement a block that is generating samples and for samples we use a simple counter so our samples will be just the output of a counter it will count up and whenever a sample is transferred our counter will count up by one and indeed the question will be what is the circuit for the counter so let's try to write a sample generator and indeed I want to create a simple counter so um, and let's the counter be a 32-bit number just a 32-bit normal value and this is because our T data is 32 bits or if you want to have a very sophisticated design then probably this can serve you better so let's do it like this my counter oh forget about my just I put counter R and then I create a, in fact sample all always block so counter our circuit I will call it and it will be an always block a very log of course post edge and the clock that we have is this master here so I just use it and for now I use a synchronous reset but you may like to use asynchronous reset I usually use asynchronous reset for now so I have the active low reset signal uh, so if yeah if the reset signal is enabled then counter should definitely be zero and the counter will count up when the data is transferred and when is the data transfer when you have the T valid active and T ready active both at the same clock cycle this means that the value is being transferred to the next module so what I do here is just a simple if if T valid is active and sorry and theoretically is active then count up so count up 
counter or counter okay this is our always block it is done yeah so we have the counter is counting up and now I should generate um, the T valid signal. I usually prefer to for T valid and in fact for making the module enable and active. I usually prefer to wait a specific number of cycles after the reset and then enable the module so after the reset we don't directly enable the module we don't directly set t valid to one we wait a specific number of clock cycles and after that we make the module enable and how many clock cycles do we wait? In fact, this was one of the parameters of our module. So, I don't know exactly for what purpose the Xilinx has been using this. But for me, I wait this number of clock cycles. And then I begin the transactions. So after reset, we wait this number of clock cycles and then we begin the transactions. So let's write a simple code which counts for us how many clock cycles are passed from the reset. So circuit, I would say to count number of clock cycles after reset and I define a register I say for example sample generator enable and then I define another in fact register and I put it 8 bits And this is the guy who is going to count the number of clock cycles for us after reset. So reset or, or after reset cycle counter. What a long name. And now a simple always block in which we are going to indeed set these two registers. So it will be the first part of the always block will be exactly like what we have here so blah 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 oh sorry so I have these masters I use them directly so let's see what we have okay and then I, I create some I write some code so sample generator this master is zero at reset after reset cycle counter R this master is again zero end and else now we are not in reset we just increase after reset cycle counter R after reset cycle counter r plus one and if after reset cycle counter r is equal to uh, this parameter that we have here so this parameter that we have here so this I use here yeah yeah 
area. Okay. So if we reach this value, then what we do? We just sample generator enable r is equal to one forever forever we, we will never make it zero it gets zero only at reset okay now the rest of the circuit that i write here they always look at this sample generator en and they operate if this variable is one okay so Practically what happens is that our module waits until mc underline m start count and then enables this and after this guy is enabled the rest of the module begins working. So I think the next step will be to generate now the valid signal really and for generating the valid signal, indeed, um, we have a rule, a simple rule. The simple rule is we have here a, an enable signal that, as we have defined, when enable is one, the module should be enabled, the sample generator should be enabled, and when it is zero, we want to disable the sample generator so and this is a very simple rule so I just apply this rule so I want to write the T valid and this is master T valid here okay so T valid T valid circuit let's begin writing t valid circuit and t this is a, in fact wire and for this I define a register so let's define it like t valid r and then put an assign statement and connect this t valid r to that t sorry t valid valid should be okay t valid r and here i have always at again the same story that we had before valid R is at reset definitely zero and then it gets enabled when sample generator ENR is equal to one so if not EN what we do we will definitely set t valid r to zero sorry else if sample generator en r is in fact active if suitable number of clock cycles are passed then t valid r is set to one indeed during the operation of our module the only one who is capable of setting the valid signal to zero is the en signal so whenever the module which is connected to our master plug it brings down it's ready we don't bring take down the valid signal we don't need to do that the only thing that we need to do is to be aware of the fact that the module, the downstream module, the module which is connected to our Axon master plug is not enabled and we should not produce any further data. But when the incoming T ready 
from the next module is not one you don't need to take the t value down you can keep it active but you should not put any new data on the line because you know the next module is not accepting any new data okay so that is it for now and I think we have the circuit for t valid and now let's go for the circuit for in fact t last and maybe that's kind of most difficult before that I want to do a simple assignment here I have forgotten and to connect the output of counter R in fact to MXIS T data okay so I, I write a simple assign here MXIS T data is equal to counter R and for T strobe as I described to you the T strobe is useful when uh, in fact you are transferring data and in some of your transfers some bytes of data they are enabled but some other bytes they are not enabled and you want to indicate somehow for the next module which byte is valid which byte not but right now that we are counting all of our four bytes of data or any number of bytes of data depending on the widths they are all active okay so for T strobe let's put it all one okay indicating that everything we have on the line is active so I I think I can do it like this M X I S T strobe is equal to in fact a number of ones okay and here what number of ones um, in fact I think we can write it like I'm not sure if it works but it should be something like I don't know if it works I, I don't remember if it works or not it's it's now a long time I have not written anything like this but let's see well I have just put it here and let's see if it didn't work we will change it but for now so we continue it's not important if it didn't work we will change it okay so I continue here with the M X I S T last circuit T last should be active at the same time that we are transferring the last part of the data of each of our packets and then we had this frame size input which is 8 bits and is indicating the size of our packets and I should write a counter whenever a new data I send on the line I should count up and so for example first the first data that we put on the line we count up by one so the counter is in fact zero it gets one or the counter is minus one it gets zero okay so then we look at the counter we compare the counter with frame size and suppose that for example frame size is one 
at the time that I'm transferring data number one indeed I should enable T last and let's write first the counter so I come here again as a very simple counter so and T last and the packet size is in fact maximum 256 so the counter will be again 8 bits frame size is 8 bits this guy is also 8 bits I will call it packet counter and always the rest of the story you already know Okay, packet counter. Packet counter. Let's put it so it is an 8 bit number. And I put it as minus 1. But I may change it later, I don't know. Right now, I don't know. I have just put something. I'm just thinking. So now what will happen is that this master packet counter will increase by one each time we have a successful transmission of date. So if m x i s valid, I think it was t valid, t valid and m x i s t ready which is coming from the next module at the clock edge which both of these guys are active what is happening is that our packet counter uh, indeed increases by one okay so packet counter increases by one this is the basic thing that we can say well indeed it may be a little bit more complicated why because packet counter is not always incrementing by one when we are we have already sent enough number of in fact data equal to our packet size the packet counter should get zero so here on the successful transmission of data I would say if packet counter is equal to now I don't know frame size or frame size minus one for example if frame size is one then my packet counter if frame size is two then my packet counter should count like this should count the first data being transferred it will be zero it gets zero then the second data transferred it gets one and then it should get zero again it should get in fact minus one again so if it is equal to frame size minus one then please set packet counter to its reset value else increase packet counter and I think that is it for now let's finish the packet counter and here what I do I with an assignment I create T last so what is T last T 
Achillas will be active whenever in fact you are transferring your final piece of data for example if frame size is 2 you should transfer 2 pieces of data and when packet counter gets equal to 1 you are transferring your final piece of data so I think it would be something like this um, XIST last is if packet the same condition as the above counter is equal to frame size minus one put it one otherwise put it zero yeah let's see what will happen I don't know right now so TLS is done and I think we have created circuit for TLS for T valid for in fact the initialization circuit then for T data T stroke and so T stroke T data T valid and T ready we have handled it suitably I think and enable frame size we have them right now and that is it I think we have the basic design of our module I'm not sure if I have done everything correctly well I've not copied from anywhere I, I just wrote something on the fly so maybe later we come back we do simulations we come back and we make changes but for now let's have this and see how it gets synthesized I just go through a sample synthesis to see if there are any errors any problems and then we go towards simulation we write a test bench for this master and we see if it is working or not okay for now it is enough I come back to the presentation so I put it in the next section of the video I would like to thanks anybody who is supporting me to generate these videos now the number of them is more than two actually I think uh, these videos are hobby videos they are I'm creating them for myself and I hope they help someone also to get more familiar with the zinc device and designing generally with Vivado environment and the series 7 FPGAs so thanks for watching in the next section of the video I will go through a, an initial synthesis of the design and then we create a test bench and we test our design we simulate the behavior of our design and we see if it is working or not working and maybe we come back and do some modifications in the code okay that is it for now